Good afternoon, good evening. <laughs> Welcome to this session on living with self-esteem. And we, for tonight, we have a special guest speaker, one of our dear teachers, sisters, who is based in the Bronx, but also helps out in Long Island, Carmen Palmer. Carmen is a retired nurse and has been studying and teaching with the Brahma Kumaris for more than 20 years. And we have her with us tonight, living with self-esteem. Um, this session, as some of you may know, is recorded and it is also on Facebook Live. So if you don't want to be visible in the recording, don't walk here in front. But we would also request you all to move over a little bit so that latecomers don't have to walk in front. <laughs> so because uh, many times some come late. Those who are here for the first time, extra welcome. I'm seeing some new faces. Um, <coughs> and afterwards, um, we will have a few announcements. Thank you, and I would like to welcome Carmen to start the session tonight. You want me to change this again? Okay, you don't need to start reading it. Don't worry about it yet. Just keep it close for now. <laughs> Let's leave these over here in case anybody comes. Okay. All right, so good evening, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here with everybody. I don't need to welcome you to Manhattan Center because you've already been welcomed and probably some of you have been coming here for a long time. Anybody here for the first time? Have you ever been to another BK Center, Brahma Kumari Center, first time? You've been? Okay. So how did you know about this one? How did you know about it this evening? Your brother told you. Okay, great. Did you come this evening, the rest of you, because of the topic? Or you just come because you come here every Thursday evening? Both. Both. OK, lovely. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. And thank you for having me to share with you in this beautiful topic, because it's a topic that is really near and dear to my heart. I love to talk about self-esteem. Um, so. This evening, um, we are going to talk about living with self-esteem. And we are hoping that by the end of the session, we would have uh, had a chance to reflect on why self-esteem? Why do we need to live with self-esteem? And what is really the true meaning of self-esteem? You know, we very often hear people talk about, she doesn't have any self-esteem. 
he doesn't have any self-esteem. What does that really mean, you know? What does this word self really mean? And what does self-esteem mean? And then, of course, to look at what is it that take us away from our original state of self-esteem? Because we will discover, you may have discovered before, that uh, self-esteem is an innate aspect of the being, of who we are, right? So what is it that has happened along the way that moved us out of that state to the extent now that we need to return to that? And how do we return? What do we need to do to return to that state of self-esteem? So we're hoping we will have a chance to kind of explore those areas, all right? The handout which you have will serve as a little guide for some of what we're going to cover. And if by chance we don't get a chance to go over everything that's in there, that's okay too. You, you take it home and you'll have a chance to, on your own, reflect on it, explore it, see what this means, what that means, etc. okay? So that's what the handout is about. We don't have to cover everything, but we hope we might have a chance to do that. So, where do we go from here? Let's just take a minute to a, a little bit of introduction. You're going to introduce yourself to somebody beside you or behind you. We won't get out of our seats. So preferably somebody you don't know. If it's somebody behind you, then turn around. And just say your name. Your name, that's not all. And then say to that person one very beautiful thing about yourself. OK? So share your name, and then one beautiful thing about yourself. Turn around. It's OK. You can turn around. You can turn around. Speak. Share with her. Share with her. Share with her. Share with her. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Did you get a chance? Everybody get a chance to introduce? Okay. You have one more thing to do. Whenever you are in a state of true self-esteem, I'm sure we've all ex experienced that, where I feel like I'm in that state of self-esteem. How does that make you feel? in an interaction with someone, or just an interaction with yourself. When you're in that state, how do you feel? Just one word. Share that with the person. Share that with the person. <laughs> just take a minute. Okay, did we get that done? Was that easy? Was very easy? Okay, 
who felt a little bit uncomfortable when I asked you to share something very beautiful about yourself? Be honest. A few hands went up. Yeah? Were you going to put your hand up? A half a hand? Or the whole hand? Okay, whole hand, right? Some of you were a little bit uncomfortable, right? Yeah. Why? Why? What made you a little bit uncomfortable? Quickly enough, right? Couldn't come up with something quickly enough. What else? Who else? Ah, uh, we didn't want to be too boastful, uh huh? Who else? Not the strange people, but to say something about yourself that was beautiful. About yourself. Okay. What if it were somebody you knew? Less comfortable. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yeah? Okay. Most times people are a little bit uncomfortable. Don't want to sound too boastful, right? Don't want to feel, make it feel like I'm a little bit egotistic. Yeah? To say something good about myself, beautiful about myself. Self-praise, they say, right? But you would like to hear somebody say it about you, would you? Would you? The same thing you would want to hear from yourself that you're not comfortable with. You would like to hear somebody say it to you, about you, wouldn't you? You feel good, don't you? Be honest about it, right? Okay. So it is that most times, a lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times, we would like people to say something good about us, to have a good opinion about me, to say something good about me. And at the same time, if that same person were to say something that wasn't so good, wasn't so nice, how do you feel? Bad. Disappointed. Am I right? Not so good. When somebody says something that's not nice about you. No, you accept them. Okay, very good. It is that, yeah, we love for people to say something nice about me. Why? Because I'm a beautiful person. So I like to hear it. It makes me feel good when I hear it. But I don't want to say it about myself. I don't even want to think it about myself because it makes it sound as though or feel as though I am a little bit boasting, as she said. So the big question for you is, how do we value ourselves? Do we wait for someone else to value me, to tell me how beautiful I am, to tell me how worthy I am, to tell me how, what, how strong I am? Do I need someone to tell me that for me to feel that way about myself? Or can I feel that way about myself without someone saying it? And that really is the big question about self-esteem. It's in that the definition of self-esteem lies. Okay. So what is self-esteem? We're going to explore that question tonight because, and it's an important question, because many of us feel good about ourselves, or I shouldn't even say that, what people feel about me or say about me will impact me if I need someone to validate me. So if they say something good about me, I will feel good. If they say something bad about me, I might not feel good, but I might ultimately internalize it and begin to believe it. And so that's the danger. Right? I might not like it. I will not like it. And why won't I like it? I won't like it because that's really not who I am. 
But if I don't know for myself who I am, with time I might begin to take it in, subtly take it in. And with time, I might begin to believe it. I might begin to question it and ultimately begin to believe it. And the danger of that believing it is that I might not even realize I'm believing it. But it is weaving, it's, it's finding its way deep into my subconscious and with time I begin to own it. And if you did say that I am not a nice person, or if you did say that I am stupid, or if you did say that I'm not good enough, with time, I might begin to believe that I'm not good enough. That is, if I don't, for my own self, define my own value, my own worth, my own uniqueness, my own beauty. If I'm not able to do that for myself, with time, I might begin to believe this. And this happens a lot with children. And it might not happen to you now, but it might. Because if we are walking around with that tendency and that pattern of believing what others say about me and allowing it to influence me, then even now I can still become influenced by what somebody says about me. But it didn't just begin here. It started somewhere a long time ago when I didn't have the ability to sort things out and to decide what to believe about myself and what not to. That's when we're children. The children don't know. They feed, they take in, they absorb everything. You hand them. They don't know the difference. And then we, we take on that pattern, what becomes a part of us. And now, if we are not able to sort it out and figure out what is true and what's not, what's real and what's not, then even at this point in our lives, we will still be influenced by what others say about us. Who gets influenced by what others say about them now? Honestly. Yeah. yeah, we do. Someone says something and it, it doesn't feel good, it doesn't feel right. I get insulted, I get upset. Yeah. It's because we're carrying around that tendency and that pattern of becoming influenced by what others say about me or do about me or how someone else define me. Okay. If you hold them in high regard, right, 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 right. And usually the reason why that happens, why we hold these persons in high regard, we usually are seeing ourselves in a lower space than they are. Okay? So that already speaks to where I, where I see myself in relationship to others. Okay? So the comparisons begin. So how do you define self-esteem? How do you define self-esteem? What is self-esteem for you? Huh? Be who you are. Hmm. OK. The question is, who are you? Be who you are. OK. Who else? Your say that again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter what somebody else does or say, your state of mind doesn't change. It's stable. Right. Okay.
Okay. Does not change, regardless of what somebody else say. Huh? Okay. 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 Knowing and living in your truth. Okay. In your truth. Okay. Anybody else? Being humble needs no one to approve. Needs no approval, is that okay? Okay. Anybody else? Self-worth is sourced internally. Okay. Did I see an upper hand? Yes. Living consciously, oneness all the time. The best version of yourself and reflect it onto others. Okay. How I treat myself internally. Okay. They all are beautiful definitions of self-esteem. The question I will ask you though, were you going to say something? You're not violent towards others, no fear. Mm -hmm. Definitely, good. So the question I will ask you, when we say, be who you are, when we say, living your truth, when we say, okay, let me use those two. Who is the you, the your truth? And who are you when you say, be who you are? Who are you? And the reason I'm asking that is because I, I know m most of you have been coming here, right? Many of you have been coming here. So you probably don't even need to hear what I'm saying because you probably could be teaching this class right now, right? You could be up here. But just to um, reinforce what we may already know, um, or for those who are just coming for the first time, maybe what we may all be reminded of. When we say to be my true self, or when I say to be who I am regardless of what anybody else says, and that is true. But the question is, we need to ask ourselves, who am I really? Who is that me? Who is that I when I say I know who I am? What is that truth when I say, be my truth? Okay, so we need to be clear about that. Because if we are not clear about that, then we can go right into the opposite of self-esteem, of high self-esteem, and go right back down into low self-esteem. A lot of times we define ourselves by what I have, my position, my possession, my title, hmm? who I'm associated with, my family, um, whether or not I have 10 certificates or 20 certificates with, or 40 degrees with their certificates on the wall, yeah? 
and or I have a billion dollars in my estate. And that define, might define me, because for many, that's what defines them. Who I know, what I do, where I come from, who I associate with, all that sort of thing. And that's what define most people. So when people say sometimes, I have respect for myself, they're really talking about, I have respect for me because of what I do, not because of who I am, right? And when we do that, if we are having respect and regard for one because of what one does or what one has, the position and possession that one occupy, then where that takes me is straight into ego. So we are coming from the ego, which is the exact opposite of self-esteem, okay? So who am I? Who is that one when I say my truth or I say be who I am? Who is that? So hold that question and let you have the definition, a definition on the handout that you have. Everybody has a handout, right? There is a little definition there. I mean, you can play with it. It's not the only definition in the world, but it's just another way of just putting it all together. It's the consciousness in which an individual constantly values the self. And we're here we're talking about the innate, the inner being the inequalities within, regardless of whether or not the self is valued or respected by others. Hmm? Right. So it's the consciousness in which an individual constantly values the self, that inner being. And we are valuing the inner being because of the innate value that we hold. And innate means it, you're born with it, you're created with it. That's who you are. That who you always will be means it's eternal, it's not imperishable, it's not perishable. No one can take that away from you. That's who you are. And that is true for every single human being. No matter how they look, what they're doing, how they're behaving, etc., etc. That which is innate within me as an individual being is innate within every other human being. Now I need to know that. I need to know what is innate within me and understand that that is what gives me my worth and my value. What I may look like now, what I may be doing, how I present myself, is just the packaging, it's just the wrapping. But a piece of diamond come wrapped in a beautiful box with ribbon and bows and uh, flowers and roses on top of it, is the same value as if it is wrapped in newspaper or in an old brown paper bag. Take the diamond out, look at it, it's exactly the same value. So what I'm doing, how I present myself maybe, maybe how I'm behaving right now, yeah, does not change who I am. And that is what is of value, not the wrapping, not the case in which it is placed. I am of value. My worth is innate and eternal, and it will always be. 
when I know that, it doesn't matter what the story is, that the part I'm playing in the story, I will value myself no matter what. No matter what others think of me. No matter what others say about me. No matter what definitions are placed on me, are given to me. I know myself. Right. Yeah, we do. What make us judge others? When we judge others, we're judging others. We're actually, there's something in me that is being reflected. And I'm projecting it onto another. Yeah. So, any thoughts? Other thoughts? Social media does what? Mm. Values. Yeah, we're looking for it from the outside. Uh huh. Approval. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. That's right. Yeah, when we look outside of us for approval, when we look outside of us for someone to value me, when I look outside of me for someone to make me feel good, it means I have abandoned my ability or my own worth. I have abandoned my own self-worth is what I've done. I don't know my own worth. So it's like, again, you have the diamond, but you don't know what you're holding. You throw it in the garbage because it looks like garbage, right? But it's not. So we have to be very careful about how we allow ourselves to be influenced by the outside world. How we allow ourselves to be influenced by others. How we allow others' opinion of us to influence us. Because once you do that, you've stepped away from your own sense of your own value and your own worth and your own esteem. And the world today suffers from that. It's driven by the ego, no humility. I want you to approve of me. I want you to make me feel important. And if you don't say what I want you to say, I get upset. Low self-esteem. Okay. So what we need to understand is what it is that give us our worth. I'm going to take this off. So when we say I, we are talking about the beautiful being of light that I am inside this body. We're all familiar with that concept, right? Who here doesn't, is not familiar with that concept? Everybody is comfortable with that, right? That we are not this, this body. We are not our role, we are not what we do, we are not the money we have, we are not our traditions, external traditions. So this is who we are innately, and innately within us, we are full. We are full of love. We are full of peace. We are full of dignity. We are full of beauty. We are full of wisdom. We are full of strength. We have everything that we need. We are complete. Nothing is lacking. We come into this world and we take on a body. And the first influence we come into is the influence of the body. And so here is the influence of the body. We are in a body. And then we have a family. And then we go to school. 
and we get a degree or we get some degrees. We have religion and we get married and we have children and we do all kinds of wonderful things. And we end up being influenced by every single thing that we encounter. Because with time, having been around long enough with time, I will forget my true self. And there's nothing wrong with that happening to us. It's natural. So we're not blaming ourselves for that. Okay, It's a natural thing we go through. It's a natural journey of the soul in the world. We move away from the real, real realization of the truth of who we are, and we come into the influence of everything else that we experience in the world. And we create, and we come into what is known as our personality. And so this personality has a lot of stuff merged in it. It has some of this, but it has a lot of other stuff that we picked up along the way. And as we go through time, what happens is we forget ourselves. And we begin to identify ourselves with all the things and all the influences that we've gone through. Once you forget yourself, you've moved out of your own essence, you've moved out of your own strength, you've moved out of your own worth and value. Now you're under the influence of everything else out here. Depending on your journey, you're going to end up with a lot of story. All of us, no matter what the journey is. So we are going to be looking to see what happens to us as we moved away from here and we moved out here. How we lost our value, our sense of our own value, our sense of our own worth. It is not until we're able to do that can we make the journey back. Because if we don't realize how we got where we got, that we got lost somewhere, and how we got there, we will not be able to figure out how to go back home. Right? Does that make sense? So, what's the first thing that happened to us? Or, you know, before we even do that, let's just stop for a moment. Let's just stop for a moment. Does everyone here feel or know that within them is this beautiful, divine being that's full of everything that you would ever want in the world? Everything, the love, the peace, the joy, the sense of dignity, the sense of respect, the confidence, the beauty. Do you feel right now that you hold that within you at this moment? Yeah? Let's just take a moment. Close your eyes for a minute. Make yourself comfortable. Take a few deep breaths. And as you breathe out, just feel that you're letting go of everything. Everything, including the body. Let go of the stories, of the dramas, the past, the tomorrows, and just become present in the moment. Just feel that there is nothing outside of this moment that you're connected with. So you're in the present moment. Turn your attention in to the self and feel the silence 
that exist within. And in that silence, feel that you are this pure energy of love. Love is exuding from deep within. It's filling you completely. It's surrounding you. And it's vibrating out into the world. And where there is that love, there is peace. And there you are in a state of complete bliss, complete joy, and total contentment. And here I need nothing. I lack nothing. I am all that I ever will need in the world. Just feel that beauty emanating from within you. Know that's who you are. Radiant, shining being of pure, loving light, pure joy. And this is what defines my worth, my value. And when you're ready, open your eyes and be back present in the room. Can you always feel like this? Can you always take yourself into that space? Because it's always there. You don't have to go anywhere outside to get that peace, and that joy, and that love. And we don't need anyone to define us, to give us our labels, and to tell us who we are, because we know, because it's there, always. Okay, does that make sense? All right, so why aren't we always there? What takes us away from that? Huh? What did you say? Hmm? Was it you? Who said? What did you? Facebook. <laughs> no, it's because we got where we are why Facebook thrive. <laughs> we allow Facebook to thrive, no? All right, you have in your little handout the steps towards low self-esteem. Where it all begins, the journey begins here. Hmm? This is where the journey begins. My identity, who do I understand myself to be? When I, you know, I remember this woman who uh, well, I always remember her. She always say, when you don't know who you are, anyone can take you and make you into anything they want you to be. And so we're not going to blame others. It's not, uh, you're not going to find it in the, on Googles. That's all right. <laughs> you, it's not somebody, you, somebody I know, it's not somebody you would know. 
But it, she says, when you don't know who you are, anyone can take you and make you into whatever they want you to be. And that is true, isn't it? Okay. So when we know ourselves, who we really are, and we live, that's the truth. Somebody said, when we live our truth. Who said about my truth? Right. That's the truth that we live, along with everything that aligns with that truth. Who am I really? And what is it that is innate within me that gives me my value and my worth? When I know that truth, I am safe. That's my strongest place. No one can twist me and turn me. I need no validation. That is true. That's not the illusion. The illusion lies out here. Okay. So when we when we moving away from self esteem, that's the first place we moved away from our identity. We move away from the true identity of ourselves and we begin to think of ourselves as what is acquired, what we acquired from the outside, what others say, what others do, what others think about me that give me my definition of myself. So that's your first step. Identity, false sense of identity. Okay, the illusion, the illusion that I am, what I have, what I acquired in the outside world. Okay, that's your first step towards low self-esteem. Yes. Right, exactly. All right, and we believe it. You know, again, these things don't happen overnight. These things don't always happen consciously, or it begins consciously, but then it becomes an internal and a subconscious programming. So I begin to think, I am this or I am that when I am really not. Right? Once you begin to define yourself on the basis of what's outside, then you start to compare yourself with others. Yeah? I have this car, but my neighbor has, I have this car, but my neighbor has another car, and mm, I think I would like that car, and if I can't buy that car, maybe she's in a better position than I am, or she's happier than I am, right? My friend lives up on the mountain top or by the ocean front. And I think I'd like a house down there too. It may not even be that big. It may be something smaller. It doesn't have to be any of those big things. But we start to compare ourselves with others because we think what makes somebody important and valuable is what they have, is what they've acquired. Therefore, what makes me important and valuable is what I have acquired. And I need to acquire as much as you do or more. And if I can't, then what happens? I'm not as good as you. I'm not as wealthy as you, so I'm not as good as you. I'm not as valuable as you. So from comparison, I go into criticism. I start to criticize myself. Or I praise myself. If I think I have matched up with you or maybe a little bit ahead of you, then I praise myself and it makes me feel good. And if I think I haven't matched up with you, then I criticize myself and I don't feel so good. But when we are vulnerable to criticism, we are also vulnerable to praise. When we find ourselves feeling good because we are being praised, watch out. Because when you are not praised, the opposite is going to happen. You're not going to feel good. Right? So having criticized myself or praised myself, and if I criticize myself, I begin to devalue myself. 
I am not good enough. I am not worthy. And not only am I telling myself that, but the world will tell me the same thing and I will believe it. Does that make sense? And somebody behaves a certain way to me, and I get upset. Even if that's not what they said, I interpret it that they're saying you're not good enough. So you live in constant turmoil. Because you get very easily upset. You get very easily insulted. Because we interpret that this is what is being said to me Oh, it's being reinforced that I'm not good enough. And then, when I devalue myself, or when I become devalued, I become disempowered. We become disheartened. We become sad. We become depressed. We become what? Angry. All of that, that internal anger, which we turn on ourselves, and then we turn it outwards. So all of that is there, because we do not feel that we are worthy, and we are disempowered. Okay, And may, most of us, many of us, what we will do when we are disempowered, when we feel badly about ourselves, we allow ourselves to create this big ego because it isn't, it's not nice to not feel good. So we find a way to kind of put the mask over it. So rather than me walking around feeling not good enough, I have to make you feel you're not good enough so that I can feel better than you. So we move out of this low feeling into this feeling of superiority. So when you see this feeling of this superiority where the ego ru is ruling, you know that underneath it is low self-esteem, always. You understand that, right? So don't get impressed by somebody who's walking around, this big boss who's walking around like a bully <laughs> and push everybody around because they want you to feel that they are better than everybody else. Actually, underneath that is this little child with this measly little low self-esteem. It doesn't feel good, so I have to create this big mask and put it on so I look like a bully. So I feel good, temporarily, until I can see behind your mask. Okay. So when we move into this state of disempowerment, it's when I definitely, I am not good enough. You're better than me. I can't achieve. What else we say to ourselves? When we're disempowered. I'm a loser. And I'm a victim. I'm always the victim. Why does this always happen to me? This doesn't happen to anybody else. My whole life I'm a failure. Yeah, that kind of thing. All right? So that is when we are in this state of low self-esteem. The other thing that also gets us down there is when we have expectations. We have expectations of everybody else, an expectation that you're supposed to make me happy. Right? Expecta expectation that you're supposed to love me unconditionally. Expectation that you must send me flowers and chocolate on my birthday. And if I didn't get it, you know what happens, right? OK. All those things, we have expectations of all sorts of people, from people. And when we don't get our expectation met, I am a victim. Typical low self-esteem. The other thing is when we hold on to the past. We're victims to the past. 
something happened to me. The reason why this is like this, the reason why I am suffering now is because my mother did something to me when I was two years old. And now I'm 50 or 70 maybe. All right? Or she did something to me or he did something to me. Okay? We hold on to the past and we can't let go and it traps us in this low state that we can't get our way out of. That's not where we belong. That's where we are most unhappy. That's not where we can be free. That's not where we can live our truth. So if we find ourselves there, and I think most of us and probably all of us sitting in this room, I'm going to take the liberty to say that, have within us some aspect of low self-esteem. If at any moment in our lives we still get upset when somebody says something to us, or we still get insulted because somebody said something that wasn't nice, we are going back into that place that is feeling unworthy, and that place that where I feel like a victim. And we need to get out of that. That's where we need to get out of. Right? All of us, any of us, can speak to that? Do we still get upset? Because somebody said something that I didn't like? Or somebody said something that I get insulted? Or somebody said something that I get angry about? Yeah? It's touching something in us that is emerging. Something that I don't like about myself that is in there. Something that I had grown, something that had made me feel um, less than at some point in time. And you say something to me and it's reminding me of that. I may not know that's why I am reacting, but that's why I react. Okay? So we want to now free ourselves from the influence of what goes on, what goes on in people's minds, what people think, what the world says, and come back to the truth of who I am, the only place where I am safe, the only place where I can be happy, where I can truly experience love, where I can truly experience peace. We have to return to that place. That's where we find ourselves returning to that state of high self-esteem, elevated self-esteem. So how do we return? We trace our tracks back. We see what, how, we, how we got out here, and then we see if we can find our way back in, right? So where do we start? Where do we start? How? Where did we start? We started with our identity, getting lost. We have to start there. We have to start again with our identity. That's where it got messed up in the first place, so we have to fix that. And everything else will follow. So is returning to the realization of who I really am. And that is why Raj Yoga meditation is such a beautiful practice. For me, anyway, I found it to be such a beautiful practice. Because what we can do, we can really, and I, and I have nothing against traditional psychotherapy and, and, and therapeutic mental health treatments and all of that. That is perfectly okay. But one of the problem is that we can stay out here for a long time trying to fix what's out here. Trying to fix our relationships, trying to fix who did what to me, trying to fix what happened when I was a child, trying to fix all those things. And we may take a very long time working on something out here very temporarily, and we sometimes don't fix it. What we need is to go back to the source. The source of who am I? So Raj Yoga works like a laser beam that cuts through the layers and goes straight to the source 
to the center to awaken the reality, the realization of who I am, the truth of who I am. I am a soul. I am a beautiful, unique individual that's full of love, that's full of joy, that's full of wisdom, that's full of power. I am complete. Hmm? I am a complete being. Yeah, I am complete. So is returning to the identity that is eternal and that is always going to be there. That's the truth. Everything else is going to follow. Right? So that's where we got lost. That's what we have to go back to first. Once we do that, we can start appreciating ourselves. Self-appreciation. I don't need anyone to appreciate me for me to feel important and feel good. Then we move away from, once we've done that, we start approving of ourselves. Self-approval. Right? You don't have to approve of me. I know who I am. I know that truth. Right? So we move back into self-approval that reinforces our identity. And then my self-worth begins to, my sense of my worth begins to emerge. And that's where I begin to respect myself. That's where I begin to accept myself. That's where I can really love myself. I have confidence in myself. I believe in myself. I believe in the truth of who I am. That's where I can really begin to have faith in myself. That's where I can begin to truly love myself. So when you walk around and you can love yourself, you do not need, you don't walk around begging. You're not begging for love. You're not begging for approval. You're not begging for acceptance. You're not begging for anything because you have everything that you need. If you are totally self-fulfilled, you have no expectations of anyone. Expectation is that you need to do something for me to feel good. And if you don't do it, I don't feel good. Whatever that may be. Right? So when we get disappointed, it's because you did something that did not make me feel good. But if I feel good always, what you do, I would love for you to do something that is going to benefit you, but it's not because of what I want out of it. Is that, is that answering it? Uh huh. Right. Maybe what happens is that if you did, if I'm going out with, if we're together as friends and we're going out together, I expect you to do something. And if you don't do it, the reason I may get upset is because I think it reflects on me. So I want to feel good about myself because you've done something that makes me feel good. 
so it's kind of a little bit of a tricky roundabout story, but it's because of because of what I think, how it reflects on me. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, so I think we finish at seven forty-five, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Send lots of love to your boss. And see the little child that is begging for regard and acceptance and, um, and, and, and respect. Because when I can respect myself, when I value myself, I don't need anyone to respect me. So when if I'm a boss and I'm getting upset because you're not doing what I want you to do, it's because I am looking for respect from you for me to feel respected. But if I respect myself enough, it doesn't really matter whether you respect me or not. I will still play my role as a boss, but as a loving boss and as a caring and compassionate boss. Right? And it, uh, it doesn't mean I won't do my job, but I will not need you to make me feel good and make me feel efficient. Right? Yes. Yeah. It helps. Right. It it will help, but one of the one of the beautiful things that we can do is what what does that soul need in the moment? And can I give it? Because a lot of times people are behaving the way they're behaving because they need something. Yeah, they need to be respected, they need to be regarded, they need to be valued, they need whatever. Can I go into that silence, in that silent space, and see that soul as a soul that needs, that is not aware that he has with him what he's looking for from me? And with love in my heart, with good wishes and pure feelings, we use that, we like to use that, pure feelings towards that soul, and compassion towards that soul, and mercy for that soul, right? You allow your love to do the job. And don't get caught into it. Because the moment you get caught into it, you're emerging that negativity and that negative energy, which is vibrating with his negative energy, and it makes things worse. It never gets you anywhere. Yeah. Exactly. It's all about meditation, really. Uh, and actually, I, meditation make it sound simple, make it sound a little limited, but we say remembrance. We like remembrance. Meditation is not only about when you sit on your mat in a corner somewhere. If you're truly practicing, and the practice of Raj Yoga is, is, a, is a beautiful practice because what we learn is how we take it from the mat and take it into our lives. So it's not only when I sit in that quiet space that I'm in meditation, but wherever I am, in my interaction with somebody, in my action, in my doing, I am in that state of who am I, and I'm connecting. So it's still meditation, you understand? So meditation is not just about sitting in a room somewhere, in a quiet room, in a quiet state. It's can I always be in that remembrance of who I am? and connect to the source of pure love. And remember that soul in front of me is also a soul, a being of love who deserves love, who is also needy. And can I offer that silently? Okay. 
All right, I see Sister Rona, and that reminds me, that tells me that Sister Rona is come to tell me that it's time that you need to shut up now. I'm going to pass these little cards around and take, take some cards and pass it around. Pass it down. Oh. <laughs> okay, take a card. I hope I have enough card for everybody. Pass the card down. Anybody has any other question? Are we okay? Are we all okay? Yes? Yes? Say yes, somebody. I'm not finished. Yeah. Right, but you see, self-esteem and arrogance, you have to be careful, yeah. It's subtle, yeah? But self-esteem is the opposite of arrogance, yeah? When you are coming from body, what we say, body consciousness, when we are coming from matter consciousness, when we are coming from material consciousness, when we are thinking ourselves as important because of the material stuff we've accumulated, then that which you think is self-esteem is going to be ego and arrogance. All right, that's a given. You have to be in the awareness of who you are, that tiny, beautiful being of love that is full and complete. And I don't need to prove anything to anyone because I am complete. The truth is the truth, and it will reveal itself and there's always that love in my heart for everyone. I always want the best for everyone. Okay? Arrogance doesn't behave that way. Arrogance say, I am better than you. Too bad if you are having a problem. Too bad if you can't do it. You shouldn't be here if you can't do it. Right? So arrogance is not about love. Arrogance is not about wanting the best for anybody else. Arrogance is about wanting for me to be able to prove myself. Mm. Maybe it could be because you might want to defend yourself. You don't need to defend yourself. You may want to just say, no, I didn't do it. That's not me or whatever. But you don't need to prove it. It'll prove itself. The truth will prove itself. Yeah? I don't, sometimes we get into the argument over it because I want you to know that I am capable of doing more than that. Yeah? I don't want you to think I was inefficient. So I'll get upset and try to prove myself. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So, yes, we're going to say. Right. Well, when, you know, when we want to prove ourselves, it's because there is a fear that you're going to think I'm not good enough. There's a fear you might think I'm not capable. There's a fear, and it's about my own sense of my own confidence. In my we can make mistakes, can't we? We all as human beings can make mistakes. So what? Does that define me? If I made a mistake, I made a mistake. It's okay. Yeah, I admit to it, but I will try to fix it. Or I'll see what I need to do to do better next time. That's okay. It's humility, right? We learn. We don't need to prove anything. Okay? We need to love ourselves for truly who we are. So I gave you a little card, and what I'd like for you to do, everybody has a pencil? 
or a pen, is you're going to write something on the back of the card to take home with you. And the front of the card says, I honor my original and authentic self. I have the right and the responsibility to be my original, most authentic, and magnificent self. So, Eckhart Tolle says, only the truth of who you are, if realized, can set you free. Yeah? Okay, so, on the back of the card, you're going to write, you're going to complete the sentence, I value, respect, and love myself because. And I'd like everybody to just take a moment. All right, hold on to that. Don't write it yet. Let's just do a two minutes of meditation, and at the end, you will write it. Just make yourselves very comfortable, very relaxed. Sit up in the chair, backs against the chair, feet on the floor. Keep your eyes open if you can so you don't fall asleep. Take a few deep breaths and let them out and allow the body to become very relaxed as you breathe out. Let go with the awareness of the body. Just turn your attention inwards and feel that there is a beautiful being of light that sits inside, behind the eyes, center of the forehead, and connect your attention to that light. Feel the silence. Feel the peace. I am a being of light, a being of pure consciousness, separate from the body separate from the world of matter. I interact with the world through the body. But I am not the body. As a being of consciousness, I come to understand that I am full and complete, full of love, full of peace, full of joy. Blissful powerful and wise. This is my eternal state, my eternal identity. This gives me my value and my worth. Knowing this truth of who I am, I need nothing from the world outside. But I'm always in a position to give to the world. So I radiate this love, this peace, this joy outwards. Touching the lives, the hearts, the soul of my brothers and sisters. This is my part 
to play, to share what I am, always, not wanting, not needing, because my eternal source, God, is always filling me with what it is that is true, my real essence. Hold that thought. I am a being of pure love. It is my part to protect what is of value in me. It is my part to share what is of value in me. What I have and my realization of it is my gift to myself and my gift to the world. Now take your card and on the back of your card complete the sentence. I value, respect, and love myself because. It is for you. You will take that home with you. So. And if you don't finish it now, when you go home, spend a couple of minutes before you go to bed and write it. And give yourself that gift. And if you write it now, before you go to bed tonight, make sure you read it. Don't forget what you read. Okay. Thank you all. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Carmen. Can we give her? <laughs> Um, nice to see so active participation <laughs> from everyone. 
um, for those who are here for the first time, if you would like to receive our monthly programs, you could leave your email at the desk. Uh, next week, it was announced that we will have Raksha Bandhan, which is a special program, a festival of love and protection, but it is moved to the Friday because we will have a very special guest for that, also one of the most senior teachers and yogis of the Brahma Kumaris here in New York. Sister Gayatri will be with us, and it will be on Friday from 6 to 8. So, yes, so it, is, it will not be on Thursday, but it will be on Friday. So tell others also whom you know regularly come if you see them, and you can bring others for that program also. Yes? No. <laughs> no, she's not coming. <laughs> so, um, again, thank you, and uh, good night, and we have a little sweet for everyone before you go. Yeah? Okay. <laughs>